Here's an important concept in quantum mechanics. It's called wave function collapse. All right, we've talked about um, eigenfunctions of, say, the Schrodinger equation and, in general, of quantum mechanics. And we also talked about operators of quantum mechanics. And operators, we said, were Hermitian in quantum mechanics because only eigenvalues or eigenvalues of Hermitian operators uh, give you real quantities. And since eigenvalues are what you measure, you want to measure real, not imaginary numbers for those quantities. Also, we said that uh, Hermitian operators have orthogonal eigenfunctions, and we showed that. And one thing we didn't mention and we didn't show, but you can uh, take it on faith from, the, faith from the mathematicians, that the eigenfunctions that you get for a Hermitian operator form a complete set. A complete set means that any uh, function can be represented as a linear combination of those eigenfunctions. All right, so to illustrate what we mean, remember when we talked about Cartesian coordinate systems? We can represent any uh, vector in a Cartesian coordinate system as a linear combination of i and j if we have a Cartesian coordinate system on the plane. So any vector here can be represented as a uh, travel along the i-axis or the x-axis and travel along the j-axis. These are unit vectors, so there will be multiples, a linear combination of these unit vectors. Well, it's the same for quantum mechanics. These eigenfunctions form a complete set, a complete basis set, is what's called, so that any f uh, state of a system can be represented as a linear combination of these eigenfunctions. Suppose we just have two eigenfunctions, say psi1 and psi2. And these are orthonormal, means they're perpendicular, and they're normalized, so it's unit vectors. Just like we have unit vectors in the plane i and j, so we have psi1 and psi2. The state of a system, then, could be a, represented by a vector in this, in this case, two-dimensional plane. In other words, the a state of a system psi can be represented as a linear combination if um, these just, uh, if the entire system, although usually it doesn't, usually has an infinite number of eigenfunctions, but let's say it has two, then any state, uh, the state of a system can be represented as a linear combination of the uh, eigenfunction one plus eigenfunction 2. To illustrate this more concretely, remember the Schrodinger cat paradox. The Schrodinger cat paradox is if he has a, you have a cat in, uh, I don't, I'm not a, an artist here, so anyway, this is my cat. It's inside a sealed box. There's some sort of device in here which gives a 50% probability that the cat will be dead after one hour. Quantum mechanics says that the uh, wave function describing the cat will be, and I'll show you why it's square root of 1 over 2, square root of 1 over 2 times the um, wave function of the uh, cat being alive plus 1 over the square root of 2. 1, <laughs> I can't draw here, 1 over the square root of 2 times the wave function of a cat being dead. All right, so remember uh, in quantum mechanics, the eigenfunctions uh, have to give you, uh, when you operate them, they have to give you a um, eigenvalue, and those eigenvalues are the only possible uh, outcomes of a measurement. So the eigenvalues here are either alive or dead. If you measure the state of the cat after an hour, the only two possible eigenvalues there will be alive or dead. Yet, if we don't look at the cat, the quantum mechanics says that the cat is half alive and half dead. All right, when you actually make a measurement, you're now you're going to measure the state of the cat, you'll either say it's alive or dead. 
it would be one of these two eigenvalues. So how does the wave function go to uh, go from a wave function that contains both alive and dead wave functions to a wave function that's either is one of the eigenfunctions with a particular eigenvalue alive or dead? How does it go there? Well, that's called wave function collapse. So if we go back up here to this analogy, here is a possible state of a system going along here. When you actually make a measurement, it has to be um, an eigenvalue corresponding to an eigenfunction. So when you make a measurement, this wave function collapses along one of the eigenfunctions, uh, uh, the basis set eigenfunctions. And that's called wave function collapse. And there's a lot of interpretations of quantum mechanics, and this is the traditional one. It's called the Copenhagen interpretation. The act of measurement collapses the wave function onto a particular eigen, uh, eigenfunction with the associated eigenvalue. The associated eigenvalues here were alive or dead, corresponding to an eigenfunction, alive or dead. But quantum mechanics says, well, you can have both alive or dead. Okay, so that's what wave com function uh, collapse is. System wave functions collapse to an eigenfunction to give a measurable eigenvalue. Remember, quantum mechanics says that you can't measure anything except that corresponding to an eigenfunction, which means you can't actually measure something, <laughs> as we know by experience, half alive and half dead. You either measure alive or dead. Now this is a conceptual problem in quantum mechanics. Uh, Einstein was probably the most famous proponent of this problem. Uh, 1930s he wrote a classic paper ex essentially saying this, that hey, it's either alive or dead. How can reality be a combination of alive or dead? Copenhagen, a school of interpretation led by Niels Bohr said, oh, well, you don't care about this, that's not reality. What reality is what you actually measure, and when you measure, you collapse the wave function along one of these eigenfunctions. And just for our added entertainment, let's show why these coefficients are square root of one half instead of one half. Again, after one hour, we said the cat is alive, half alive, a 50% probability the cat will be alive or the cat will be dead. Why do you get the square root of one over two? Well. Let's just say that we want the cat, so here's the cat wave function, psi star psi of the cat. We want this integral to be equal to 1. We want the cat to actually be there when we actually open it. It'll be alive or dead, but we want the probability of actually the cat being there to be 1. It didn't suddenly just disappear. Well, let's write down what the... Um, we're using, by the way, Dirac notation here. What down? What uh, write down what the cat wave function is? We said it's one over the square root of two times the alive. I'll use psi a for alive plus one over the square root of two times psi dead, and then again one over the square root of two psi alive plus 1 over square root of 2, psi dead. All right, so that's what the, um, uh, and again, remember in Dirac notation, actually I didn't need this, did I? Uh, the Dirac notation, things here on the left are complex conjugate, things to the right are not, are the complex numbers. Take the complex com conjugate, you put it over there. We'll just multiply this through. This is equal to square root of 1 over 2, and I'll just write that as squared, times um, psi a dotted, or er, into psi a, plus, I'm going to do this again, square root of 1 over 2, I'll just square this, although we know that's 1 half, so I'll take that times that, we did that times that, so now psi a times psi d, wave function alive cat, wave function dead cat, plus, I'll take this one, psi a times, uh, we already did that one, take this one, psi dead times psi a, 
Oh, I don't feel like keep writing square root of 1 over 2 squared. With your permission, I'll write 1 half <laughs> times. So what do we do here? Uh, psi d psi a plus, and then we get that 1 times that 1. So this is 1 half times psi d psi dead psi dead. All right, if this is an orthonormal basis set, and that's what we usually uh, say with, if they're Hermitian, we get orthogonal basis sets, and we can always normalize them. So these are orthonormal basis set, just like in the Cartesian plane, I and J are orthonormal. They're normal because they're length one, and they're orthogonal because they're 90 degrees apart. So let's say alive and dead are orthonormal. In that case, if you take psi a, psi a, that's equal to 1. Psi a, psi d, that's equal to 0 because they're orthogonal. And this is the definition of orthogonality. This is equal to 0. Uh, this is dead, sorry, and this is alive. And this is equal to 1. So what we have is uh, 1 half, uh, square root of 1 half squared is 1 half. Those terms are 0, 1 half, and that's equal to 1. So by using the normalization constants of square root of 1 half, we make um, each, uh, um, each eigenfunction be 50% probable of occurring. All right, so that's wave function collapse, a conceptual problem in quantum mechanics. If you read the Wikipedia article on interpretations of quantum mechanics, there are all, all about 10 or 15 different ways of interpreting it. The um, commonly accepted way is the Copenhagen way, which says when you make a measurement, you collapse the wave function to one of the eigenfunctions here with a corresponding eigenvalue. Okay, hope you enjoy that.